Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. Today we're talking about student housing. My guest is Brent Little. He is president of Fountain Residential. And one of the things that seems to be impacting commercial real estate in all sectors has been you know, rising construction costs. And I guess uh, student housing has been no different. So what have you seen for rising costs, and, and what do you see today? We've started to see some real stabilization in the construction costs. Uh, over the last few years, we'd be getting initial estimates of cost, and then we'd go to closing, and we'd see those costs go up when we let the final construction contract, and we'd have to value engineer out some of the construction costs. Uh, in our most recent project, we saw those final bids drop several hundred thousand dollars, and we were able to add additional contingency to the project. So we're starting to see them drop in markets and level off. One of the issues that we have with uh, student housing projects, a lot of times they're not in major metropolitan areas. They're in, in college towns. Uh, and so let's say, for example, Oxford, Mississippi, there's nothing there but a college. You know, Morgantown, West Virginia, that's a big college town. And there's not a major area to deploy construction trades from. So the issue that we've had in previous years and to some extent still today is we're saying we've got a project in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and we may be trying to move tradesmen from the Dallas, Fort Worth, or Houston area. And they say, I've got more work than I can do in these areas. Why would I go somewhere else? Right. Uh, so we've been fighting that, but we've seen it stabilize now. And uh, hopefully it will trend down a little bit and maybe take up some of the, the cap rate sensitivity and interest rate sensitivity that we've seen. Okay, so you had some really increases that uh, kind of surprising to you in the past and now it's stable enough. So why is that? Is that based more on the labor cost or? I, I think that it's, uh, it's some of the things that we mentioned that construction lending is tightening up and it's not just for student housing, it's for all multifamily, it's for all sectors. And uh, you know, perhaps all those tradesmen, they, they move from various sectors from home building to multifamily to student housing, retirement housing, all of those sectors. And so we're seeing that uh, stabilize. So a little bit of supply and demand for the, for the services. Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. Interesting. So. And in an earlier segment, you were talking about interest rates and their impact. So, so what are you guys looking forward to as you look at 2017? Uh, what do you expect to see for increases in interest rates and how do you think it might impact student housing? I think over the last several years they've been trending down, which has meant that, meant that our cap rates have been trending down as low on the exit side. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're starting to see an increase. I know that I talked to a broker earlier this week, mm -hmm. and they were in best and finals in one of the projects, and the people that were in the best and final round came back and said that they were going to have to decrease their offer by half a million dollars because of a projected increase in the interest rates. So, that's going to, to squeeze a few more projects out of the realm of possibility if you're seeing cap rates trend up and your return on cost is sa staying the same, that means you'll have less production. So I think we're, that's helping the decrease from 60,000 beds down to 45,000 beds next year, and it could trend even lower if, if the returns get squeezed. Well, it's interesting because I think a lot of people own commercial real estate and, and own student housing have kind of been looking at the, uh, when they want to sell their properties and they keep thinking, well, maybe we should sell when interest rates were low. And they're like, well, they're going to stay low. They're going to stay low. You guys have been saying interest rates are going to rise for a couple of years. Exactly. And is it finally going to happen? I mean, our, our owners are going to, our, our sellers are going to believe it? Well, we'll, we'll see. The proof is in the pudding, right? right. And, and, yeah. uh, and everybody has been concerned about interest rates rising, mm -hmm. but it hasn't happened yet. But yeah. I think if you look at what's happened since the election, I think the fears seem to be mm -hmm. that they're going to be realized and interest rates are going to tick up. Now, it doesn't seem like they're going to go up you know, in the long term maybe, but, mm -hmm. but we'll have to see what happens. And, yeah. and that could decrease the spreads and reduce the amount of product on the ground. So, so did you guys in the student housing sector think that if Hillary was voted in, uh, that that would be good for student housing? Because she was talking about, you know, supporting uh, college costs. And now that uh, Trump's in, do you, do you, what do you forecast there? Um, I think we've all given up the forecasting business, first of all. I don't think there's anybody in that business anymore. Uh, but 
Obviously, uh, the Democrats were talking about making uh, all uh, college funded by the states uh, without debt for the students. It wasn't free, but they were going to, you were going to come out without debt, which, uh, so it wasn't free college, but it, it was interesting that the universities, the articles I read about the universities said that they were not very supportive of that because frankly, they can barely keep up with the growth. We talked about what's happening to the millennial demographics and the 2.2 million increase in enrollment over the next year. They're looking at their abel abel availability of academic space and professors yeah. and everything else to take care of the academic needs. And if you said they were going to have additional millions of students on top of that, they wouldn't be able to handle it. So yeah. uh, I think that would be good for us because that would be more money for housing as opposed to paying the tuition bills. Uh, but that seems to be off the table at this time. But I'd, I'd say we don't need it with the enrollment growth that's already projected. Uh, the industry is in good shape. Yeah. Well, what's your quick answer on cap rate? So if you're projecting a exit cap rate two years from now, what would you expect? With what, what range, I guess? You know, we talked about earlier that uh, that those fall out of bed to campus mm -hmm. uh, locations we're seeing a five and a quarter. I think they've been below 6% for some time now. It's been several years since we sold a deal that was north of a 6% exit cap rate mm -hmm. uh, on all of our entire portfolio across the United States. So I'd say we'll stay sub six, but I think it probably will trend up if we see treasuries and interest rates rise over the next year or two. Okay, just up, just up some. <laughs> uh, stay, stay south of six for those okay. good properties. All right, well stay with us. We'll have more on student housing right after this message. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. Hey there, thanks for checking out the Commercial Real Estate Show. Don't miss a video of special interest to you. Be sure to subscribe below. And if you appreciate the videos, be sure and thank our sponsors. There's a link to more information about them in the description. For more videos, podcasts, and articles, check out CREshow.com.